What's up, everybody? Kalka here, and we got some very, very big news around PoE2, the game looking fantastic, and we're super excited about it. So we want to go over some things in this video today to kind of compare it to Diablo, but put it into Diablo terminology and, you know, help us Diablo players that want to come and play PoE2. This is what I've learned so far. Comment down below what you've learned, but we're going to go through a few things. First off, just get it out of the way. It's going to be releasing on December 6th. So there's supporter packs you could buy, and this is called the beta, which this beta is bigger than anything Diablo's done, which is absolutely insane. So the beta is going to start December 6th, and you could play six characters december 6th you have to buy a supporter pack which starts at 30 dollars. the nice thing about the supporter packs are they actually go towards some in-game things you might want to purchase like stash tabs it's not pay to win the game is not pay to win which is really cool so i'm really happy about that and i figured that's how they were going to do it because that's how poe one was so i think the most important thing is picking your class so i'm going to go through just some of the classes so there's six out of the 12 on the full release you'll get all 12 options which is absolutely insane but here we go this is the six different classes so first is the monk. The monk is a fist and furious melee fighter. It literally could do combo wombo attacks to slay its enemies. It is very cool looking. It looks like it's going to be a class that is going to be fast, especially in the end game. You're going to notice that this guy could fly around the map and there's a lot of really cool abilities that help the combos generate more damage. So the monk is looking really cool. Then we got the warrior. So the warrior is a bit slower and it does big chunks of damage. So it's kind of like longer attacks. But the cool thing about the warrior is, is you could have a shield and you could just lock all incoming damage. Some stuff I don't think you could block because I feel like it's like an area effect that just pounces you. But there's a lot of abilities that you can definitely block with this, uh, the shield. If you decide that you could dual wield two handed weapons and the warrior once you do a slower attack that does more damage you can kind of roll out of that if you wanted to uh, which is actually really cool to do because you don't want to get stuck in a move and then get you know one shot or something like that so that's really really cool and then we got the ranger is danger so <laughs> it looks really cool it's very agile so it's got ranged attacks from a lot of different elements and skills and it feels like this is going to be one of the faster classes comment what you guys think i think that this was going to be one of the faster classes that you're going to be able to play. It looks really cool. The animations of like the jumps, the, the arrows, the you know shooting up. Oh my gosh, the the graphics are so good in PoE. I'm very impressed with that. So I'm excited about these classes, man. I kind of want to play them all. Uh, fourth, we got the mercenary. The mercenary is like shooting a crossbow, but it feels like a gun because you could get sniper crossbows, rapid fire grenade launchers like you see right here you're you're doing ice you're freezing enemies and then you're shooting them down and the one thing about the mercenary that i seen that i learned is i want to learn how to use wasd very well in this game because you could see them backpedaling a lot and backpedaling with uh, the s button on your keyboard is probably going to be really important so i think i will play poe2 with wasd instead of clicking the mouse to move i think that's going to be a better option for sure for uh, for poe so uh, if you played world of warcraft you'll you're pretty used to it already uh because that's how they actually played it world War world of warcraft so next up we got the witch the witch i feel like is going to be the most played class i would say the comment down below what class are you thinking you've seen five so far you know what the sixth one is it's kalka's class but the fifth is the witch and the, the witch can call out hordes to attack for you and not only that like the, the the minions that you call out with this class just look like they're smarter i watched some gameplay footage and it looks like they know what they're doing compared to what they're doing in uh diablo from what i see on the necromancer so i feel like that would be a big quality of life change and be very good for the witch 
So then we have the Sork, number six, the class that Kelfk is going to start with on December 6th. It is so cool looking. The fire, look at that firewall. That is beautiful. That is something else. Look at the, the detail of the flames jumping up. Man, the Sorcerer's got all the elements. Classic Kel's Spellcaster, what I love. And you're just excited to just play around with some builds with the Sorcerer. So that is the six classes. Comment down below what class are you going to play. Let's go on to some supporter gems. All right, so Path to Exile 2 has a thing called support gems. So think about Diablo, how you have the skill fireball so i pick fireball and now i could get enhanced fireball and that's then i could choose between two destructive fireball and some other fireball well support gems are basically enhancing your main skills the really cool thing about that is you could do a wide variety of customization to really build your character so these little gems here you see on the screen they're called uncut support gems so you're going to take those support gems when you right click it you're going to open up the screen of your skills so they will give you recommended options for the support gems but you don't have to follow that you could do your own so in this example we have our main ability right here you could see so we put the support gem right here and this is called a multiple projectile support gem so what this is going to do is i'm going to show you in the next scene all right, so here's the example. So you're going to shoot your normal grenade. Boom, it shot one. Looks cool. But now it shoots three because we have that support gem in. Easy to test, easy to see. And then you could also just for no cost, doesn't cost anything, you could just move these support gems around and place it and try it out in different main skill abilities. So that is support gems. Uh, really cool thing that they introduced to the game uh, and makes it easy to really customize your character the way you want. So really so the good. passive skill tree. So this thing looks intimidating, but I, I really don't think it will be. So there's a couple things that they've changed uh, from POE 1 to POE 2 to make it a lot more user friendly. So there is 1500 nodes on the skill tree, but listen and hear me out. So everybody has the same so a barbarian has their own skill tree a sork has their own skill tree in diablo a necro has their own skill tree so there's only one passive skill tree the only difference is if you're a witch you start here wherever the witch is but if you're a sorcerer you start in a different spot so it's the same skill tree no matter where you're going so the cool thing about the the tree we'll go over a couple things that is really cool so once you level you get one point so every level you get you get to put a point in so when you're in your section of the tree this is the monk's tree you see right here it's not that complicated to where you think you might mess something up you really won't and the nice thing is if you decide i want to change some of the skills you could easily change and refund the passives that you want and it's just costing a little bit of gold. So each of the nodes are basically broken up into clusters. So you'll see that there's going to be these small nodes here. And then these are just basic things that will help your character like 10% speed or attack speed or something like that. But then you have your big nodes and those nodes are called notables and they have larger rewards for getting to those nodes. So 24 increase attack damage and 10% chance to blind enemies on hit with attack. So you get a lot more out of that. So there's also things uh, you can see right here. I'm going to just draw a line. Well, not really draw a line, but use my mouse. And these are called attribute highways. So that's actually how you get to these other nodes because you can use other nodes from other classes um, if it makes sense for your build. So you could, uh, if you want to cast multiple projectiles, that's on the mercenary skill, but there's a, there's a lot of classes that uh, cast projectiles. So you could utilize their ability. So then once in a while, you'll come across these things called keystones so these are even more beneficial to your build so maximum life becomes uh, immune to chaos damage which is we don't know yet because i haven't played but it looks like it's pretty sweet <laughs> items are probably one of the most important things that a player will think about do I want to play this game? Because we want the opportunity to get some really cool loot. And I know that POE 
to really put in some unique items to the game. And there's four rarity groups of Path to Exiles items. So it was just on the screen there. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So basically what you have is your normal item. You have your magic item, your rare items, and then your items. And unique is orange. Also, with items, you're able to upgrade them. And that's kind of like right off the rip. So in Diablo, the crafting system is basically craft it unique when you get a shard, right? I think unique. So the difference here is you're going to be crafting starting at level one. So there's a, the first orb is an orb of transmission. So if you get this, you could actually add a modifier on a normal item. Um, so you could see that they're going to click this and you put it in there boom so now i got another ability so then you can get an org of augmentation and that will give you another mod and then you get a regal orb and that regal orb will give you a third so you can see now that we have adds fire damage adds cold damage and then critical damage uh 21 to critical damage bonus so we upgraded this three times with the three different runes and then you have the exalted orbs and you added two more because it made it a rare. Uh, so you got plus one to level of all projectile skills and then gain five life per enemy killed. So you could have a total of six. So you're going to be crafting right off the gate uh, when you get some items. So if you want to upgrade an item, you could do that very early. You're not going to mess it up. It's just literally getting you a random effect on your item to progress further in the game. Speaking of progressing further in the game, we start off at Act 1. We're able to go to Act 3. They said that's going to take about 25 hours to complete. And then we could complete Acts 1 through 3 again. And once we do that, we'll be uh, around level 60. And you could get to the end game after that, which is actually really cool. Uh, there is end game in a beta. Wow. So there also is a magic item vendor. So you could... Throw in your offer so there's maybe some pieces of gear that you don't want and you could disenchant and you could get some of these orbs to upgrade your gear. So it's kind of like uh, salvaging a little bit in Diablo. So another thing that's important is some items will have sockets on them. So here you can see that we put a glacier rune into the helm and it gave us more cold resistance and adds damage. So then if you do not want an item that is sock socketed, don't just leave it there. You could salvage it and then you could work towards getting a socket item for your next piece of gear you want to put it on. So you get this artificier's orb and it will allow you to add a socket to your armor or to a weapon. So weapons could have uh, two sockets and armor could have two sockets and the rest of the gear could only have the one socket. So you could also salvage rare items and items that are basically a little bit better. You'll get like armor scraps and you'll get these things right here. It says two, three, and these allow you to master work your gear. You could increase the gear by about 20%. So the stats on the gear uh, through this method at the salvage bench. It's called blacksmithing. So it's a lot easier than master working. So uh, the thing about uh, that's a little bit different in Path of Exile 2 is you could buy items from vendors and they tried to keep these items relevant to your level. Uh, so it might be good to do that, um, to take a look every, you know, so often you're in a town, take a look at what items are there because it might be a big upgrade for you. Gold is only used for purchasing things on your own character. You don't trade with gold. You could trade between players, uh, but it's only items. And there is some really cool rare items this is called Qu quill rain short bow and it literally just doubles your attack speed so so if you get a unique you're really going to build your character around it all right something else you could do in character progression is ascension ascension is like something that diablo does not have so i can't even compare it to something in diablo maybe with the season seven they're making ultimates rank to level five and it does something different not even close though so basically you're going to able to ascend your character to two different from beta two different ascensions so you could pick this way or this way uh when the actual full season comes out or the full launch of the game you're gonna able to have three ascensions per character so you're gonna have 12 classes with 36 different ascensions so it's basically changing the play style of your character adding more fun adding more customization through ascending your character 
So right here, I'm just gonna I'm gonna show you the Tempest Caller. This is a Sork. So grant skill Elemental Storm, trigger Elemental Storm on on critical hit with spells, and then you actually have your Ascension Tree. So not gonna go too far in depth. You do get Ascension after Act Two. You could do it. It does take some time to ascend your character. You have to, and and it looks like it could be pretty difficult and time consuming. So you, if you are gonna do the Ascension, let's call it a quest, you might wanna definitely uh, put some time aside that you're gonna get that done. I wanna show you guys how much content is coming into this beta again. So early access is acts one through three which we talked about you do it on normal and then you do acts one through three again on cruel so it's probably just gonna be a little bit harder so you should be level 45 ish by the time you finish act three and then you should be level 65 ish when you get done with acts one through three again and then you get to go to the end game to level 100 so end game guys end game they literally put so much work to end game it is absolutely fabulous to see i'm excited to share some of the stuff with you guys so this is the atlas there is seven distinct different end game options that you're going to get on the beta which they're also going to release a ton more look at all these different nodes it is beautiful it is literally the core of the end game it's infinite and it expands in so many different directions. So you, how you get to an area on the Atlas, the old school maps, is use these waystones. These waystones can be used in a map device allowing you to enter a map. Waystones can be used once. So you'll collect these throughout progression and you'll have more waystones to use on the Atlas slash maps for end game content. So once you uh, click traverse and you open up these portals and you and your party could travel to these waystones. So once you're exploring through the atlas, you'd basically you use these waypoint stones to open up adjacent waypoints that you've already opened. So you have to go in an order um, and create your path that you want to go uh, during this end game content. So there's cities, there's structures, there's different things that can be found in the different directions that you're going. So there could be like someone that's doing something totally different uh, on a stream than someone else that's doing uh, a different part of the Atlas slash maps. And I think that's really cool because we're not going to all be doing the same end game content like in Diablo. Like everybody's doing the pit. I might be on a totally different side of the end game content than someone else and you click on my stream you're seeing different content and there is 400 different monster types there's hundreds of bosses so you're gonna get a fresh feeling when you're playing these different maps that is a huge difference and that is something that diablo does not do well they're giving us content that is different in end game in every aspect and it goes on and on this is just like the beginning portion of the end game we're getting a lot more end game content even in the beta so you could also find unique maps that have different effects on them like this one says 642 percent experience gain if you complete this map so it's just an island full of beasts that you could also get special areas that are going to be hideouts for your character and once you clear them out you could actually make your own hideout and put npcs in your hideout you can decorate your hideout so it's like your own home slash base and you could do all your things like crafting in this space really cool stuff i'm not going to get too much in the end game because obviously i haven't played it yet so i don't really deserve to talk about it all i could say is this game has so much end game content it would be really really hard to get bored in this so there's more bosses, more end game content, more itemization, more customization. PoE 2 has so much bringing to the game and I'm going to be playing it and I hope you guys are going to be watching it because I'm excited and I really want to show off some of the cool stuff you could do in this game. So thank you guys for watching. That's just the info I have for today. I will have more info as it gets released and once I start playing the game, I will be making videos and content about POE2. Thank you guys. Have a great day.